Alright, draft physics video. Um, strange one. <laughs> Relatively strange. Anyway, um, somebody posted me a link to a, a little paper that Miles Mathis had written in July. Uh, that was sort of a, well, whatever. It's just a page where he um, is outing his adversaries of some kind. Um, you know, if you run projects against me, I will out you. Ooh, ominous. Um, <laughs> so, and it's got me on top of the list for some dopey reason. Um, but whatever. Um, so, yes, yeah, so I'll do the brief history thing again. And I'll read this slop, but it's just so silly. So, um, anyway, so let's go. Hundreds of bozos are running low-level projects against me. I am getting tired of it. Their projects are transparent, and I can't believe anyone is falling for them, but some are. So he's thinking that I somehow have intentionally created some idea that I look like him. Or, if he's willing to concede that it has nothing to do with anything I have done, <laughs> it's just what other people have projected, um, then he's treating me like shit for no good reason at all. But clearly, he's treating me like shit for no good reason at all. But anyway, I have mentioned draft science at YouTube before. Yes, kind of inaccurately. I mean, you pointed out how, well, I haven't watched any of his videos, and I haven't really paid any attention or figured out anything. And, you know, I had communicated with you previously. I sent you an email, uh, you know, when I opened this channel, um, um, soliciting collaboration on some of our common interests. And you would have none of it. Um, you know, you were, I work alone. And that was the extent of his uh, reply. And, and, like I said, I, I thought it would be interesting just because we did have a lot in common. We are similar age, but we had similar interests. And, you know, on his profile there's a picture of him when he's like, I don't know, six or something. And, you know, I have exactly the same <laughs> freaking picture of me. But anyway, so we had, you know, both liked golf, uh, painted, you know, different things. Some common commonalities between us. And um, so, um, no big deal. I have no interest in any other way. I, I read some of your physics papers and thought they were interesting. Now, later I found out you've written a bunch of truth or loony papers that are just complete batshit crazy, but whatever. That's uh, your thing. All right, he doesn't make it clear he isn't me. Now, every single video where I've ever mentioned your name, I clearly talk about you as somebody else other than me, but in every one of those videos I think I've said the words I'm not Miles Mathis, because every time I've made one of those videos it's usually in response to some idiot thinking I'm Miles Mathis, and I clearly say I'm not Miles Mathis. I mean, fuck. I mean, I can write, you know, I can change my channel name to I'm not Miles Mathis if it would make you happy, but I, should I really have to do that? Uh, where exactly have I run a project to create this confusion. I have absolutely no interest in, in, in my physics being confused with your silly physics, shithead. I don't really want to be thought of as some kind of Jew, Jew worrier, <laughs> you know, whatever, whatever you are, you know, your obsession with Jews. I don't have such an obsession. I really don't want to be associated with somebody with such a, so, uh, uh, obsessions. And, um, you know, clearly there's lots of things about your character that I may find offensive to have myself slandered with, asshole. God, I mean, you know, <laughs> the fact that you're a petty little weasel, I mean, it's one of the things I wouldn't want people to think I'm this petty, a douche. Anyway, and his videos pollute the page of my friend, Stephen, whatever. Yeah, we are, your friend, okay, Stephen is the Dutch guy, good, that's a better way to put it, who made the video on pi equals four for me. Right, so if somebody responds to somebody who makes kind of a bold accusation that somehow we haven't figured out what pi is because it's actually four, and they're doing it based on an equation that's just a conversion equation for radians to degrees, which doesn't make much sense. I don't know exactly how that equation is going to prove what pi is, but regardless, and they completely don't know shit about physics in the sense that they don't seem to understand that systems that have only one force in them, that is the velocity of the object uh, moving and it's being confined by material barriers, and one that has other forces in it called gravity. 
and that they're not the same then. The two experiments can't really be compared to each other because one has two forces acting on it and one only has one force acting on it. And you bozos, you idiots, you fools can't figure that out, then yes, I'll make a response video pointing out how you're really fucking weird fuckers. You're going to sit there and make a bold accusation, pi equals four, based on using the wrong equation plus some idiotic assumption that, uh, you know, gravity works the same as a round curve is the same thing as gravity. When gravity is an active force moving things and a round curve isn't an active force moving anything in a force way. So anyway, so I pointed out in the video that you can't use a steel ball going around a material curve and compare it to gravitational objects because the steel ball has to slow down because it's the only thing with any force in the experiment. So to go around the curve it has to use up its speed to move in the new direction, friction. It's the only way it can happen unless you elevate the curve. See, it's like a racetrack. You elevate the curve then you're putting gravity back into the equation. Get it? A force. Anyway. So, so this is just kind of douchebag, I'm saying, right? I'm not allowed to make a response video to somebody. Fuck you, idiot. What planet do you live on, crazy fuck? Anyway, I didn't put the related videos in the related category. I didn't do that. It wasn't my plan. It wasn't a project I ran. I mean, you're so fucking clueless. Here you are living on this planet of technology, and you don't know how things like YouTube even work? And then you're going to make accusations against somebody? You fucking cunt. Anyway, draft science appears in the sidebar, right? Not by my volition. I didn't pay to do that. I didn't ask somebody to put my videos there. I didn't have a fucking thing to do with it, douche. Just like your videos, if you made them, might end up in my sidebar if I did a video about your dopey physics. Shit for brain? So anyway. All right. Draft sign appears to be in the sidebar, and I think he is, and some think he is me. And again, somehow that's my fault. You're going to sit there and make this this critique of me based on what some asshole does because they're too stupid to figure out you're such an egomaniacal crazy fuck that there's no way you'd ever name your channel Draft Science. First, you wouldn't imply that there's anything draft about what you're doing, and second, you would make sure Miles Mathis was in there somewhere. So who, who's kidding who here? Your stupid followers are dumb enough to think so. Not none of my people. None of my people go to Miles Mathis' channel and say, Hey, that looks just like in Mendham. No, they don't do that, jackass. All right, but some scumbags are using this uh, his ugly mug. Okay, so why don't you out the scumbags who are using my image to imply that Miles Mathis is ugly? Why don't you go show them? Why don't you out them? Why are you fucking ragging on me, fuckface? <clears throat> uh, to imply that I have aged very poorly in the past decade. So, again, it's a pretty silly comparison. First, you know, well, I'll just read some more, but I mean, whatever. Uh, I know, <clears throat> I now think that may have been his main assignment and use. So I somehow had an assignment and a use. I don't even understand that. I now think that may be, have been his. His who? 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 Who's the his person here besides me? People think he is me and runs screaming. Uh, whatever. Uh, yeah. I mean, you know. Let's. Here's here's a self portrait of Miles Mathis. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Right. So I would want to be associated with this poofter. Sorry. No, thank you. Um, he does paint interestingly, but I mean, it's just, you know, I pointed this out before. I mean, it's, got, it's so lazy in some respects because he doesn't finish, like the ears aren't done. You know, everything kind of just drifts into sloppy. And then it's like got this white, white spot in his hair for no good reason. And, you know, the highlights are a little too bold. And you're just saying, Gee, you know, it's easy stuff, you know. But anyway, otherwise, you know, proportions aren't bad. But the, it's a poofter photo. So that, that's, that's how he sees himself. And he's concerned about how he's getting maligned by my image. 
when I, you know, I'm pretty concerned that somebody would confuse this guy for me. <sighs> but anyway, let's read some more. Um, all right, the first pick is me. The second is draft science. Can you tell the difference? So first off, I didn't get to pick the photo he's using, right? <laughs> Which is, you know, it's not a bad picture from videos. I mean, videos are pretty crappy, but sure, okay, it's not a terrible image of me. Some will claim that it is an old pic of me, uh, but it isn't. No, it's just one in no light with you wearing a hat. So you're indoors wearing a hat. You're going to take a picture to prove how you're prettier than me, and you can't even take your fucking hat off? You know, that somehow you've aged better? I mean, isn't wearing a hat a sign of somebody's got like a bald head or something? <laughs> so what you pussy out for? But anyway, uh, it is a selfie I just took in the bathroom mirror. So you don't even know how to take a selfie without a mirror? So why did you take it in the mirror? I always look great in mirrors, to tell you the truth. I mean, if I could turn this camera around now, I look fantastic in the mirror that's behind it. Um, <laughs> so yeah, okay. I mean, you're just so... I mean, this is the kind of shit that bugs you, huh? This is what you're worried about. Oh, amazing. I didn't clean up first or use professional lighting. Well, either did I, asshole. I made a video, okay? Hundreds of them. I don't clean up for them at all. Because I didn't think I was going to have to worry about 54-year-old poofters uh, that was going to scrutinize my appearance. Shit. <laughs> Gee. Anyway, since I didn't want an unfair advantage. Oh, it's not an unfair advantage to take my image from freaking YouTube clips. Uh, still, I think you can see why I don't like being mistaken for draft science. Well, I just go back to, uh, you know, I think you can understand why I wouldn't really want to be thought of as this guy. Yeah. So anyway, I mean, what a pile. I mean, just petty crap. So he sits there, I'm almost 54. Yeah, and I'm, oh, at the time you wrote this, I was almost 50 fucking eight. You know, I guess you don't understand. That's another physics thing, I guess. You know, it's sort of, uh, things are on curves, you know, and, and how how age starts to kill you. It's one of those those curves that, <laughs> you know, goes up, um, you know, much, much more um, steeply as you get further down that road. So every year starts to count. It's like when you're a little kid, you change how you look a lot when you're young. Well, the same thing happens when you get old. You get old really fast. You know, you hit over a certain little line, and all of a sudden, everything goes to shit rapidly. So, yeah, you got four years on me, fuckhead. Yes, kids, you too can age gracefully. So, again, that's all subjective. If you can get your sleep, don't smoke, and don't drink or do drugs. Yeah, but you can't grow taller, so I'll always be taller than you. Ha ha ha! You know, I always have a better, you know, shinier ass and a, a bigger, uh, you know. So, ha ha on you. Um, the second person, there, so now that, that's it. So he puts me on top of this stupid jerk list. I didn't do a damn thing to this stupid cunt. And, you know, he does this, whatever this is, this fucking I'm ugly thing. You know, for what reason? I mean, what, if I was really ugly, you know, say say if I had gained 50 pounds, you would have taken, from, you would have made fun of that too? That would have been your grand victory that somebody confused the face and they didn't realize that, oh, look, he's a fat pig. <laughs> so that would have been fair game for somebody who never, like I said, I didn't, I didn't, I, I mean, certainly by the time I was doing his the argument against his pi equals four thing, I was pretty suspect of his physics. But what I did on this channel was basically a shout out. My first mention of Miles Mathis was basically just to point out, hey, I think this guy's kind of interesting. Yeah, he didn't uh, didn't respond to my email, doesn't give a shit about collaborating, but he's got some interesting papers he's written. And this is the reward you get. Yeah. Anyway, I, I just thought, you know, what, what a petty little twat. <sighs> okay, so anyway, next. <laughs> yeah, next. Um, so this was a paper, this most recent paper. So I read it since I happened to be there. Um, yeah, and the, the weird thing is he didn't put this, whatever this is, this page about his haters or whatever, his problem with people... Um, What's he call it again? Projects, running projects on him. 
Um, there was never a link on that to, to this page on his on his physics page. It's, so it must be on his truther science page. Um, so I never had seen it. So I hadn't seen it uh, till now. Um, but anyway, um, so um, yeah, back to the this page. All right. So um, it's a whole thing where he's talking about electrons. He basically says he's not interested. It says right here. I'm not nearly as interested in the electron as most physicists and chemists are. I gave up on electrons binding theory long ago. Bonding theory. Um, and then he talks all this stuff about electrons <laughs> and, and um, uh, more importantly, the um, positron that um, is supposed to be the anti version of an electron. Um, and again, all of this science is based on stuff happening in cloud chambers and. Um, that really isn't a photograph. You're not watching electrons tear through some kind of material and it's not what you're seeing. You're seeing a very indirect um, representation of an electron's freedom. They're not being a free medium. <laughs> They're in a medium. And in mediums there's all kinds of things that can happen. And so positrons are you know, in regular experiments, you'll never see one because they're so um, rare. Um, so it's only in certain circumstances that you can create any kind of abundance of them. And I would argue that that's clearly because you're probably exposing the mediums to some different circumstance too, in the sense that the the radiation you're sorry, the radiation you're using is. Um, energizing the medium or changing it in some respect and that's why you're seeing more of these wrong direction electrons and I would argue that they're not there's you know there's no I'm not gonna say there's no positrons I'm gonna say something like they're either okay a subdivision of a proton or they are an electron it's just that the local field conditions are such that the electron is in two different fields. I mean, it's not going to be bent if it runs right next to a nucleus, then it's going to be captured by that proton. So it kind of depends on what the local environment is, which way an electron will spin to its death. Now, if we're talking about just traveling in a distance, well, that gets a little more complicated. But um, I still have uh, my doubts about the theory of antiparticles. Um, I don't think so. I don't think so in kind of a strong way. Um, I don't think there, the physics needs to go, go there or create that complication. So anyway, Miles Mathis, when you read through the article, he doesn't exactly say ether, but he's clearly a believer in ether because he thinks things spin and that their spin uh, causes disturbances in the field, the charge field and that that charge field somehow is making things move in certain ways. So depending on which way they're spinning, we'll decide which way things move. Now he seems to also think that photons have antiparticles and that the difference between the two is that they're spinning somehow. And I think that's going just a, not, a totally impractical step. Um, because once you make photons spin, then you have to explain how they travel through the ether without being without bending based on their spin. You know, so why aren't they being why are they traveling in straight lines? Why how do they get from far away galaxies to us uh, if they're spinning and theoretically spinning in you know on many different planes to us. They're not, you know, if they're not polarized in one direction then they'd be spinning all over the place. So you'd never be able to see anything. Um, so, yeah, I don't buy that. Um, so, yeah, there's a lot of detail in this article. Um, but, yeah, it's based on a whole remaking of physics um, that, you know, I don't think if you go through it piece by piece that each piece could be defended. As I just pointed out, I don't think you can defend photons having spin in an ether. Now, if you gave them spin in a non-ether, that might be doable, but spinning them in ether, how, how can they not be bent by their spin? You know, that's a simple question. I think, simple enough. Um, so, 
All right, I think that's enough of that. And so I'll go back to comments because somebody left a comment. Where are the hell the comments? Back here, I guess so. So that was the Miles Mathis paper. Um, you know, just the pointless insults for no good reason. Maybe I'll just put on my channel page a little sentence underneath saying I'm not Miles Mathis to make it clear in some way that I have never desired to be confused with Miles Mathis. I've never attempted to create any such confusion. I've never been in any way encouraged any such confusion. I'm mean, it's just such a scummy I mean he's just such a scummy little turd. <laughs> anyway. Um so uh, this guy's comment. I mean this just these people you say, what is this stuff? Bugginger Mickle. Uh, sad part is you're not even trolling. Leave the thinking for the big boys. And that's coming from Anonymous Coward. Nothing. No channel content. No anything. Nothing to demonstrate that I should be at all interested in his douchebag opinion. Just whatever. Rag comment. And your penance when you're demonstrated to be an asshole is going to be what? Will you, you know, properly, um, <laughs> you know, Subaco yourself and such. Ugh, what a fucking idiot. So anyway, useless crap. I mean, you really have to make some kind of argument. You're going to say somebody's wrong, you have to have some theory of the wrong elements. Uh, anyway, all right, so uh, the comment was a comment to... Well, how come it's not there anymore? Ah, it's down here. So, I already did this other comment about the gravity somehow not working, and that, you know, I've sort of explained. It works. It's called mock gravity. It's not a problem. We're just talking about the inverse square law. How many times do I have to say it? All Einstein spent spaces is a drawing of the inverse square law. Well, maybe I should draw that. So, yeah, when I get to drawing, I'll do that. All right, it says, good question, Ben. <clears throat> As I was reading his explanation for gravity, so I'm kind of thinking this guy thinks I'm Miles Mathis. I, I mean, that you know, because I'm just thinking, I don't really have an explanation of gravity currently on the website in the sense that it's not a complete explanation. But anyway, I was thinking that it's not correct. The phenomenon which he describes is called Cosmere Force. So that's not in, I'm not describing anything like that in my description. I mean, clearly I'm saying there's, uh, you know, if anything, you can compare it to the um, cosmic background radiation, but it wouldn't be any of this Cosmere force, which isn't even being accurately described. And it seems they've changed the, uh, the, the description in the last couple of years, because it seems like people before used to know that the real issue was that this experiment demonstrates the creation of charge. That things have to have to um, decide. They can't stay negative negative or positive positive. That two things brought together are going to tend to go. Electrons are going to force the issue and protons. Protons don't like protons. Electrons don't like electrons. So when you bring two things together, one of them has to decide to be positively charged. One of them has to decide to be negatively charged. And that was sort of the interesting subject, is how do they probabilistically decide which plate goes positive and which plate goes negative? Now, that's an interesting question. But once you understand that that has to happen, that one will go positive and one will go negative, that's the efficiency of, of nature. It's just going to force the issue that they'll all cascade in one direction and the others will all cascade in the other direction. Once there's the tip, it'll tip one way or it'll tip the other way. It won't tip no way. And um, <clears throat> so it doesn't have anything to do with um, space creating, uh, you know, zero, zero, what do they call it, zero something energy. It has nothing to do with space energy. It has to do with what matter does and matter has to obey charge rules. You can't bring electrons towards each other without them fighting back. And the same with protons. And they'll fight back into a neutral position where the protons on one side will go 
out and the electrons on the other side will go out to meet each other so to speak because they're not hostile to each other one will go positive one will go negative anyway and there is some evidence that this force might be very strong at small distances well, all of this stuff, frankly, isn't understood very well because, frankly, they're still not conceding the simple points, which is that the inverse square law isn't a law. I mean, it's a law at distance. It's not a law close up at all. Between anything that's close to something else, the law breaks down. There's because there's <clears throat> the law is based on the fact of a bunch of point sources, and the point sources when two things get closer together the point sources can't in any they, they can't miss each other in terms of no matter which way the force goes out it hits the other side see when they're further apart you can miss a lot but when they get closer and closer and closer you miss a lot less and the only ones that miss are the ones going almost vertically out and when they get really close so the inverse square law breaks down and <clears throat> the force is very strong uh, might be very strong at the small distance and therefore responsible for the so-called strong nuclear force. But <clears throat> I don't reckon that it's responsible for gravitation. And I don't reckon either. Gravitation isn't charge. So, you know, <laughs> I don't know how the two subjects could have anything to do with each other. So I don't know where you got this from. So I think Mark you're confusing me with somebody else because that's not my theory I don't know how you could miss the theory it's really simple um, I mean frankly you know it, a, a big piece of the gravitational theory is 300 years old so, so you know, whatever um, I just did the part where I fixed it you know the broken bits all right, I don't think there's anything else here that I haven't already done. Okay, um, so on to the drawings. Or on to some drawing. I would imagine some drawing, yes, something. I'll draw something here. Um, all right, so um, so the first point is, you know, I, I have emphasized this stuff, but I guess people just, just don't hear me. All the forces are the same force. So it's all made out of the same little bits. The cosmic background radiation, um, let's see, gravity, magnetism, it's all made out of the same stuff. The little bits are all the same. And the only thing that distinguishes, okay, gravity from magnetism, from the nuclear forces, let's say, and from photons is the manifestation, that is, having them at a frequency. That's what photons are. They're gravity at a frequency. Magnetism is gravity where the polarization is segregated. Now, I don't want to say it that way, but I mean, <laughs> that's what it is. So yeah, I might as well say it that way. If that's the only way I can end this confusion, they're all the same force. It's all gravity. So when you turn on the light, it's a form of gravity. You're just sending gravity at, at a frequency. So when you have a magnet, the magnet's merely just taking gravity that comes in, and it's making all the red gravity come out of one side and all the black gravity come out of the other side. So there's two kinds of little bits that make up gravity. Red and black, round and square, doesn't matter. Right spin, left spin, I don't care how you think of it. They're two distinct elements in the gravitational field and the two distinct elements react to the two distinct material bits electrons and protons exactly oppositely and that's why electrons repel and protons and electrons attract quote unquote or are pushed together and <clears throat> all right and so another key thing to recognize, so, so all of these, all this thing is just about the fact that there's these little energy bits, okay, and they're in these two stupid, you know, different forms, red, black, whatever. And they're moving in all directions around everything. And what, what changes, what a material bit can do, okay, so when they crash into a material bit, 
what the material bit can essentially do is it can change their their arrangement. It can make the black thing red and the red thing black, so to speak. And that ability is what creates all the complexity. I mean, that's probably not the best way to do it because it's really about direction. <laughs> so if they're, if you're not changing direction, then you just got straight back. You know, you just get reflections back. You don't actually switch. The only way you switch is the right turn thing. So, so when something hits at right angles is when you change the color. The, the red bit goes this way, the black bit goes that way. So that's when they switch identity. Um, but anyway, um, so the whole universe can just be looked at as the equal and opposite reaction that always exists is just the fact that anything that's balanced, so anything that's moving uh, in a, you know, relative to your frame or however you want to look at it, but anything that's not moving is, it, it essentially has the same balance in it that you have. So it has the same bits, you know, uh, the same pressure in different directions that you have. In the sense that if, if it has a bias in a direction, you have that bias also. And so you're moving with it because you both have that bias. And the only way you change that direction is to get rid of the bias. So that is, if you have extra if you have extra arrows going this way and you <laughs> get rid of those into the environment then you stop moving and the little arrows go into the environment and so every time something moves there has to be something else moving so in gravity the equal but opposite reaction is is that you know in the relationship between the earth and the sun the earth moves towards the sun and the equal and opposite reaction is the sun moves towards the earth. That is the center of gravity of the sun does the same thing the earth is doing. The same amount of mass moves in the sun that moves in the earth. So when the earth absorbs, you know, whatever, uh, you know, I don't know how, I don't, I don't know what, uh, you know, five newtons, okay, of, of force, in this direction uh, to bend its orbit the Sun moves five Newtons worth the center of its gravity towards the Earth so the Sun isn't just spinning in one location it's actually processing it's actually spinning in all kinds of directions as all the planets influence it its, its center is migrated um, by the mass of the acceleration towards the sun that all those planets are moving. And it all ends up being circular in the end. It's balanced because as the sun goes around, as the earth goes around the sun and completes the circle, it actually forces the sun to move in every single direction. And every single direction just cancels each one of these out and so the end product is after a year it's in essentially the same location as it started because it all equals out pretty much I mean obviously the whole solar system makes it a little difficult to all equal out but the total of the whole solar system will always be the same the same amount of movement this way as this way will be accomplished in the entire solar system the entire solar system will the stuff moving towards the sun will be the same as the amount of movement the sun spent time it spent moving towards the planets in all these directions and all the directions will add up there'll never be any um, imbalance aero arrows left over it's all consumed now and that's not counting the movement of the whole solar system but again that movement is all of the bits are already doing that all of the planets, everything's already moving in that frame, so it's all moving that way anyway, um, as an extra velocity, as an extra imbalance it has. So again, the balance is never zero, it's just your current inertial state. So whatever your current inertial state is, is the, the condition um, 
that's called balance from your perspective. Now there is absolute balance. There's no. I'm not arguing for relative frames. I'm just arguing that it's the 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 fact that you can have net differences is just a fact of life. There's no rule against having imbalances, um, but there is such a thing as standing still in the universe, perfectly still, having its perfect balance, and so the entire universe is under the same rules so the entire universe is conservational it won't be moving somewhere you know and for every bit that's shooting one way there's another bit somewhere shooting another way so it all adds up in the end because it's all theoretically um, there's no reason to believe it has a bias in any one direction because it sort of would reveal itself now, <clears throat> I would argue that if you start injecting spin into this and an ether, <laughs> that it gets a gets pretty difficult to figure out how all these spins could end up being conservational. Um, that there wouldn't be a whole bunch of uh, imbalances created and inconsistencies in function. So I'm just going to argue that this simple math makes for an easy. I mean, a simple mechanism accounts for the um, different behavior. So the very fact that you have these two these two fundamental reactions of the head-on collision that ends up just being a reflection um, and that you have this interaction where two things change direction in the sense that the two different polarizations switch identity is all you need to create all the phenomenon in the universe and if you injected spin on top of that I'm just saying it's, it it doesn't go with um, all of quantum mechanics the kind of well, quantum mechanics would end up breaking down unless you can convert the spin into some sort of quarter half you know and that just ends up being too arbitrary how you know how why would all the spins be in regular intervals of speed I mean that doesn't make much sense you know that they'd all, each that that spin would have to also jump just like a, a, a you know electron um, electron uh, what do you call them shells that that the electron shells would at the same effect would be with spin you could only have a quarter spin or a half spin or a whole spin but you couldn't have three quarter spin or whatever or five eight spin or something um, all right so. I need to go into anything else. I just want to emphasize it's all one force. The one force can again the, the simple argument is this you know, all, all I'm saying is, is you take this force and you just move it at a consistent frequency you know and that's your electromagnetic spectrum. Just those things moving at a frequency. And if they're and if you have a system that takes a bunch of um, you know diverse stuff comes in you know this is the filter I keep talking about in magnetism I mean all magnetism all a magnet a magnet isn't an active agent a magnetism is just a, a filter and so all the magnets doing okay the magnet let's say is just this some other color um, it's taking anything that hits it red in one low in one half so the, the black stuff will just reflect. So you can sort of understand, say this was the black half of the magnet, this is the red half of the magnet. The black would just reflect. So it just comes off straight back. And the red goes in and goes perpendicular. So you can sort of understand that the and the 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 same thing has happened on this other side in the sense the black is going perpendicular. So the blacks go into the red section, the red goes into the black section because it goes perpendicular. All right, all the blacks reflect from this side, so all the black ones reflect, all the red ones reflect, and the ones that go, th you know, the ones that don't get reflected because they hit a proton or the other ones hit an electron, those end up switching sides and essentially all coming out of one side, or all coming out of the other side. All the reds end up going to one side, all the blacks end up going to the other side. So it essentially is reflecting red and black, and then that's magnified because all the 50% that didn't hit the right thing, hit an electron instead of a proton, 
or a proton instead of an electron, those things all come out one side of the magnet. So the magnet ends up just radiating segregated force. That is, the force has now been filtered to be pure, red at one side, all black on the other side. And it, this is the electron force, and this is the proton force. So protons will repel, red will repel against red, black will repel against black. So the same poles repel each other because the poles are biased in terms of the electron force versus the proton force. But anyway, so it's just a manifestation of gravity. It is gravity that's the active agent. There's nothing in the magnet that's doing anything. There's no hyperburloids. There's no spinning fields. There's none of that crap. There's no motion in a magnet. I mean, they keep using things. They talk about this right hand rule. You know, they, they use a conductor going, say, through the paper here. Okay, and they talk about, oh, it's a right hand spin. And, and there's nothing spinning here. We've detected if it actually had motion. There's, there's no motion swirling around the conductor. We'd be able to throw a piece of confetti, so to speak, into that motion and find it. And they, you know, it's all so fraudulent because they use experiments like where they take a, a electrolysis. You know, they'll put an electric current on two magnets. So they'll stick two metal things in here that, that are magnetic, okay, permanent magnets, and then they'll run electric current on them, okay, for electrolysis. So they create bubbles that come off the sides of the magnets, and then it creates a a tornado effect. And that's only being created because the bubbles are going right across the surface and then across the top and right up the middle. So they're creating a low pressure in the, in the middle, you know, like air, and that's creating the swirl. So it has nothing to do with anything really moving. It has to do with the fact that the air bubbles are causing the motion in the water. The, air, the, the hydrogen and oxygen that's being created by the electrolysis. So, you know, it's, but see, there's just so many things that this, you know, people see something. Oh, look, it's spinning. It's doing something. It's active. None of these things are active. They're not active. A magnet isn't active. A magnet is dead, quiet. It's not doing anything except when the field energy hits it inside the magnet, the red stuff goes this way, the black stuff goes the other way. That's all. It's all inside the magnet, though. None of it's happening outside the magnet. There's no spinning anything. There's no motion. There's no fuel for motion. <sighs> I mean, this fuel argument is really important. I mean, everybody just thinks all this stuff can happen for free, that planets can move into each other. We don't have to explain the force. That magnets can move into each other or be repelled away from each other, and we don't have to come up with energy from someplace. We don't have to explain the equal but opposite reaction. There's no equal but opposite thing. There's no explanation. You don't. You don't have a. It's no. Okay, that's not right. It's not the equal and opposites that's missing. There's no explanation for where the energy comes from um, to actually physically move the matter because there's no explanation that the f it has to come from external because there's no chemistry that you can take it from without changing its mass and neither one loses mass. <sighs> Planets don't lose mass by producing gravity. The Sun doesn't lose mass to produce gravity. Magnets don't get lighter. It, okay, it's probably enough. <sighs> So anyway, so yes, there hasn't been any, you know, there's no counter arguments I've heard or haven't been made any, so there's nothing to really argue with. But, um, you know, I have to come, I mean, this whole, the ether thing, they, people just say stuff. Like I said, they t to talk about a spin and then they say, see, it could spin into each other, but two spins are opposite. But they don't take into account what that means as byproducts, that you'd have all kinds of effects if there was a bunch of ether currents moving, you could detect them especially if photons are spinning also because obviously you could put photons in circumstances where the ether is spinning opposite to their spin and then you'd have to account for why the photon didn't move because it would have to move if that were true if it was truly sensing the the spin in the ether it would have to be affected by it logically so anyway right enough this light off yeah the shadow's not that bad probably live with that, putting the light on. 
<sighs> Alright, so, um, not exactly the video I wanted to make, but uh, you'll have to do. So, yeah, so there's, there's nothing to say. I mean, you know, people suck. <laughs> yeah, that's it. That's, yeah, that's good enough. People suck. Oh, yeah, I don't... Uh, yeah, on the other computer, I'm, I'm watching this stupid uh, Gen 11. Black Hole Blues and other songs from outer space. Oh, I mean, it's this whole LIGO thing. I mean, they're just so trivial. Songs. Songs. Oh, fuck. This is not physics. Anyway, till next time. And such.